Good morning, Digit fam. Adam Dowd here, kicking off another exciting week in tech and geekery. And if you're like me, you spent a good part of this last weekend reading how fans at D23 went bat crap crazy over this new Star Wars montage that Disney showed off and spent a lot of time looking for leaks of it, only to have Disney tweet the damn thing this morning. Link in the show notes. Plus, after watching it a second time, I realize now that the 10 seconds of footage I did find weren't even in the montage. The internet is so disappointing, but let's fix that right now. It is August 26, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. So this is kind of a weird thing. About a week ago or so, I don't remember the context of the conversation, but my wife and I are tooling around in the car, and we started talking about ride sharing and autonomous cars. And I said, you know, when you think about it, autonomous cars probably won't last long as normal cars because normal cars sit idle for 23 hours of every day. You drive them to work or the train or wherever, and then they sit there. And then you drive them home, and then they sit there. Rinse and repeat. So having a car running constantly and driving around continuously, as presumably an autonomous car would, would kill the longevity we currently see in cars today. Well, it turns out Ford agrees with me because over the weekend, John Rich, the operations chief at Ford, said exactly the same thing. And by the way, can you imagine having the name Rich and actually being Rich? I'm just saying, I'd change it. Anyway, Rich Guy said that autonomous cars will last for about four years or so before heading off to that junkyard in the sky. Now, Ford is coming at this from a different perspective than my casual conversation. Put more into context, Rich was saying that more and more people are looking to ride-sharing and overall less demand for cars in general. Rich was saying, it's all good, brah. Autonomous cars are only going to last four years, so we'll still have to make a crap ton of them. Ah, good to know. The prevailing theory here is that instead of a personal vehicle sitting idle for 23 hours of a day, communities will gather fleets of autonomous cars to take them where they need to go, near or far, kind of like an autonomous Uber. They won't need to park, they'll just drive around until the next task comes up. So instead of sitting 23 hours a day, they'll be idle for maybe one hour a day. And all that's going to take a toll. While today it takes five years for a car to get up to 60,000 miles, you might see an autonomous car doing that in one or two years. So it makes you wonder, will anyone even be able to afford a self-driving car? Aside from the rich guy, I mean. These aren't cell phones, people. We can't just swap them out every couple of years. It really points to the fact that if self-driving is really going to work, the days of personal vehicles are probably coming to a close. And we're not even going to talk about the entrepreneurs who are going to try to buy 10 self-driving cars and hook them all up to Uber. So Uber can treat that person like crap too, presumably. Well, while it's fun to speculate, it should also be mentioned that we're at least 10 years away from anything like this being even remotely possible, let alone actually implementing these systems. As much as Waymo, and I hate to say this name in the same context, but Tesla, have made gains in this area, along with a number of others to be certain, we're still a long way away from having cars with no gas pedal or steering wheel driving through the Chicago snow in the dead of winter. Not to mention, plans like this will probably develop in major urban centers first and slowly, slowly spread out to the suburbs and then even more slowly spread out to rural areas. We've got a long way to go, people. For example, how will autonomous cars fill up with gas? We don't even answer the fairly simple questions at this point. Anyway, for now it remains a fun little thought experiment, so let's continue thinking and experimenting while we head into the Roundup! Over the weekend, Google rolled out a new Easter egg in its search engine celebrating the 80th anniversary of The Wizard of Oz. Search for the name of the movie and click the red slippers that appear in the right-hand side of the page and off you go. It's a fun little thing that my wife showed me over the weekend, which just goes to show, as good as we are here on the Digit Daily, news travels faster on Facebook. But we have less racist uncles, so there's that. C. Scott Brown over at Android Authority penned a missive to iPhone users reminding them that those green bubbles that we talked about last week have actual people on the other end of them. So don't look down on green bubbles just because they use Android. Of course, he wrote this letter to iPhone users on a site called Android Authority, so while the message was right, I'm not sure it was the best delivery method. Google dropped a third place in the smart speaker shipment race, surpassed by Baidu in the Chinese market. 
Ouch, Google. Not only were you passed by a relatively new contender, but you were passed in the always listening speaker category in a country that has a social credit system. I'm not really sure I'm following your logic here, Baidu speaker owners, but it just doesn't seem to be a good idea if you live in China. Just saying. The next web takes a crack at analyzing internet from space and arrives at the conclusion that low Earth orbit satellites like SpaceX's Starlink and Amazon's Project Kipper could save Americans as much as 30 billion with a B dollars per year. The theory is that once these satellites are deployed, the entire country will have access to broadband, whether they live in the city or in a country shack with no paved roads. This increases competition and unseats the Comcast empire. Suddenly, with more choice, Comcast and its ilk will have to compete with internet from space, and all this sounds really great. But maybe let's put up more than a dozen satellites before we start prophesizing the salvation of humanity. Just a thought. The Verge has a roundup of highlights coming out of the aforementioned D23 convention this weekend. Mandalorian, Obi-Wan, Star Wars, Pixar, MCU, it's all happening, including the continued bastardization of my childhood in the form of a live-action Lady and the Tramp. And I'd say more about the story, but I just threw up in my mouth a little. Speaking of Disney+, Plus, Engadget reports that it's all about quality over quantity when it comes to developing new movies and shows... Unless, of course, you're talking about live-action remakes, then it's all about quantity. And finally, it seems that in addition to internet from space, we're also going to start hearing about crime from space. There is a long story attached here, filled with marital disputes and child custody issues, but the long and short of it is, an astronaut aboard the ISS used a NASA computer to log into her estranged wife's bank account, and the estranged wife in question called it hacking and identity theft. So we may be hearing about the world's first crime committed in space, Except for Elon Musk Gardner, that is. But anyway, since this involves divorce, separation, and children, this gets messy super freaking quick. So I'm not going to go into details because damn, okay? But depending on how this investigation goes, we might have our first space criminal, and that's exciting and terrible too, but kind of mostly exciting. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again tomorrow. <laughs>